Well, hello everyone. Um, this is part five uh, from the uh, construction services during the design. Uh, today we'll focus on the site investigation. This is part four um, of chapter six. So what is site investigations? Well, beside the fact that the site inv investigation focuses on the uh, type of soil and uh, to be able to identify the type of foundation and clearing and grouping, uh, site investigation is like actually uh, way beyond uh, just uh, soil conditions. So some of the factors that we look for as a deciding, deciding factor to build the project and also to make an accurate estimate is to uh, send out an, uh, an estimator or and a project manager to look at uh, some, some details. Some of them are access to the site. Do we have one access? Do we have multiple access? How the traffic uh, flows within the job site uh, when we have loading and unloading materials? Also, the amount of lay down area available on the job site, is it one, is it more uh, for each trade, or do we have to rent um, lay down areas? And then real road uh, locations, utility, utility availability, um, that if it's an urban versus rural, uh, where in urban we can tie in directly to the probably existing, as opposed to the rural where everything is going to be remote. and uh, routes into the sites and so forth. So the way we conduct the investigation is for project manager or and an estimator to obtain a plotted plan to look at the size of the site, existing structure and existing roads and the right of way easements. Why do, why do we uh, concern about the existing structures? Because these existing structures could alter the design and the, fun, the, the, uh, the uh, foundation design. So uh, those are things we need to be looked at for to be able to recommend for the structure engineers the type of foundation, if you will. Now, means and method tools that we typically utilize to make uh, site in, uh, assessment uh, our maps, surveys, uh, soil reports, and all those are good, and they record at the moment. But the problem is we don't know this moment was a year ago, five, ten years ago. Um, in other words, is, they're not up to date. And uh, therefore, uh, we need to make a physical site assess, uh, physical site investigation, visit, and assessment. And, uh, and, the, and also in the site visit, we need to be in the lookout for the surrounding area. If the, the project near a school, public school, private school, then the traffic will, will change. And if you have a deliveries, then you need a spotter outside to work out the traffic. If the project is in downtown area, that's another scenario where uh, you're going to have to block traffic and obtain permits and so forth. And also we talked about the utilities when you, uh, if you are in an urban area, you can tie into existing, but also you still have to obtain permits and pay fees to the city and, and, and state uh, or county. Uh, but if it's an urban area, then everything will be remote, for instance. Uh, will you do you need to rent a temporary temporary toilets, or there is an existing where you can use, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So those are kind of the details. Are uh, 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 deal breaker, and we uh, we they, they tend to charge the project, and therefore we have to be careful with that. And also we need to look at highways, road, waterways, airport. Uh, those are all things uh, help the projects, uh, help us to come up with, the, with a good solid um, uh, image about the project. Now, as far as the local part, uh, practices, if you guys remember, we said sometimes we need to determine the market, the current market at a particular project area. Um, to be able to 
create org packages um, according to the to the area and get uh, local business involved because that will help us to promote for the project for the company and it could be one of the the owner requirements so those are good information to be looked at for we also need to look for uh, regulations rural regulation codes and even union regulations and 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 see if they allow the workers to work one shift two shifts three shifts and uh, if they don't then what about the neighboring uh, uh, unions and how they uh, if they allow trained uh, or untrained uh, workers to work on this project at that particular location and then market rate for labors and materials and see do you have to bring material uh, labors from other areas or you can just use uh, the labors there but if you're going to bring labors from other areas you're going to have to pay for their per diem perhaps or uh, rent and some other expenses and then the uh, availability of certain subs in that area or not then understanding uh, the custom and practice can make a difference in uh, how the, the work is divided up, up among the trades, and this is the work packages I was telling you about, how we attract sub from within the area um, to bid the project, but if those packages were created, uh, bid packages were created differently, then it would be less attractive to them, and you as a GC will struggle. And also which material to use, uh, especially for complicated projects. Uh, I work on this project where they have to ship materials from overseas or from Europe. And uh, you have to make arrangement for this, the shipment. And those, uh, those items or material have uh, long lead time and then they must be been uh, ordered way ahead of time for the delivery. And then when upon receiving them, you have to have um, proper storage for them that may cost extra money and then installing product and means and method for that then also the labor breakdown how the trades normally do business depends on the custom built up over time in some areas carpenters do the work that laborers in other areas do and vice versa and the code and regulations, so local officials can cause delays and cause the job money. So are they, the, the, the officials in that area are easy to deal with? Uh, is the owner super picky? Will that gonna cost you any money? So those are deciding factors. And also labor availabilities in that area versus others and see if they are available versus not. And the same goes for materials and equipment. Again, uh, we, we mentioned that do we fabricate on site? Do we fabricate off site and bring them to the job site and the shipment and transportation and the storage and so forth? So, for that, here I'll, uh, I'll start.